Hey everyone, Pastor George here, and I'm coming at you today with our theologue. But as I said last week, I said ghosts, and we're going to do ghosts, but we're actually going to do ghosts later in the week. Today, we're going to do aliens. Now, I wanted to do a whole week on like supernatural stuff because I realized that there is these things are really popular in our culture, maybe popular with some of you, and I think the Bible has to say something about these. So we're going to do aliens, we're going to do... Um, ghosts we're gonna do horoscopes and like uh you know all that type of stuff astrology um and we're gonna do angels and we're gonna do demons and we're gonna talk about what the bible has to say about those things if it has anything to say at all uh, and how we can engage with that stuff or engage with people who believe in this these types of things um, i want to start out by saying i don't think that people who disagree with me on any of these things are idiots i understand that there are people who believe certain things about certain things or have their own life experiences where they maybe have incur engaged with this type of stuff before so if there's one of these topics that you really believe in um and you think it's super important or whatever i guess you can reach out to me but I, Oof, I, I know I kind of just opened a can of worms by saying that, but whatever. So today we're going to talk about aliens. And I want to talk about what the Bible has to say about aliens, which is about them themselves, nothing. But what does it have to talk to us about the possibility of life elsewhere in the galaxy? But first I have to debunk some things. So aliens... Uh, have become a secular god and what i mean by that is is that many people use aliens or um, their existence of aliens as ways of disproving christianity i run into these people all the time there are people who believe that aliens built the pyramids people that believe aliens did all sorts of stuff the history channel didn't help with this at all oh i hate ancient aliens i think it's one of the dumbest things in the world and for any of you out there who do believe in ancient aliens I would heavily recommend the video that I'm going to put in the description. It's two and a half hours long, but you can just go to your favorite topic that Ancient Aliens deals with. Some guy who used to believe in this type of stuff and and uh, and shreds it apart. And I think it's important to do that. One, because it's it's good history. I mean, this is a story and I care about that. But two, I think it, it'll challenge your beliefs in a way that is good because a lot of this stuff becomes insular. So if you're into that type of stuff, you have to go engage with it. I have. I've read Eric Von Daniken's Chariot of the Gods, which was a slog because my brother, of all people, used to believe in stupid stuff like this. So I used to engage with him all the time. So I know I said I wasn't going to insult anything, but the ancient aliens want an insult. Sorry. But on to aliens in general. So people use them as a secular god because they use them to explain away things or explain how humans aren't that important or explain how... You know, maybe some of these religious things happened, right? Maybe Jesus was an alien. Actually, talking about ancient aliens, there's this absolute wacko Presbyterian pastor who's on ancient aliens and says stuff like that. It's just crazy. The fact that he hasn't been defrocked is nuts. I actually think I might reach out to the, I think he's part of the Presbytery of Southern California or something like that. It, it, maybe we all should. Everyone in the church should reach out to them and tell them to get that guy defrocked because that's ridiculous. Um, and so they'll use them to explain away things. And there's kind of two ways of arguing about aliens. The first and most famous, I believe, is Drake's equation, which is the one that most people use when you when you talk to them about aliens, right? What they'll say is they'll talk about how vast the universe is, how many billions of planets and galaxies, all that type of stuff. And you're, and you're going to tell me that there's no other life out there, right? That's Drake's equation. Drake obviously uses a mathematical equation to try and prove that, but that's different. The opposite of uh, thing is what I do, which is the Fermi paradox, which is this physicist Nikola Fermi put forward said that if aliens existed and they had our intelligence level and the universe has been around for trillions of years, why aren't they here yet? And you might say, ah, oh, they are here. Look at all these random photographs that the NASA or whatever just released. Yeah, we need harder proof than that. Um, a lot of this just ends up becoming conspiracy theories tier stuff. So I don't believe in aliens, and that's not because I don't want to believe with al in aliens or because I believe my faith will be shattered if aliens exist or anything like that, as is often conjectured. I love science fiction a lot, all right? I'm fine with all aliens. I'm fine with the uh, attractive ones that's in a lot of science fiction. I'm fine with the stupid bulbous-headed-looking ones or those disgusting ones that were in the Indiana Jones movie. Whatever you want to say the aliens look like. I'm cool with that as a science fiction person. I think it's fun to think about and talk about and engage with. However, I'm not going to put aside rationality just because it seems likely that aliens exist. Uh, 
doesn't mean that they're actually here or among us or have ever engaged with us because we have no proof of that. What we do have proof of is a man who lived in the first century claiming to be God and was crucified and his followers said that he resurrected and then were killed for believing that. You know, that's something we actually do have way more than any sort of evidence for aliens. Something to think about. Um, so I just think, it's, and as far as what the Bible has to say about this, there's, so the Vatican came out with a famous document a few years ago. Um, I don't, I can't remember what it's called, but it was on extraterrestrial life. And they said, yeah, the, the church is fine with, with that being a thing. Um, and the reason that I haven't read it, but my guess is the reason they're fine with it is because of John 1, right? Uh, or John, actually, no, sorry, John 3.16, where it says, um, for God so loved the world, right? And you guys know the rest of that, but I want to focus on the world. The world in Greek is cosmos, um, which is like the whole universe. So it could be that God loved the universe so much that he sent his one and only son, right? And that not only is that promise for humanity here on earth, but it's for all life in the galaxy. Sure, I, I, I could be fine with that. I just need to see proof that aliens exist, and I want to see it from real sources, not from a bunch of crackpots or blurry photos. Um, yeah, and conspiracy theorists. So I need to see that before I really start to believe in anything. Um, so please don't send me weird articles. I do not want to slog through that this week. So anyway, send this to anyone who believes in ancient aliens. Um, yeah, I will see you tomorrow where we will talk about ghosts. So I'll see you then.